that we have, that the blessings that we have, that the provision that we have, that the healing that we walk in, oh God. The world did not impart these things unto us, oh God. So the world cannot take it away, oh God. I pray that we would not succumb to the temptation of letting situations rob us of our joy, oh God. At a time when so many people are hungry and thirsty for hope, oh God. So many people don't know where to look, oh God. We carry in us a joy, oh God. I pray, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that even through this service, you would remove the barriers that prevent us from showing the joy that we have on the inside, oh God. I pray that when people see us, they would see the joy of the Lord, oh God. I pray that when people talk to us and interact with us, hallelujah, they would know your joy, oh God, and they would begin to hope again, oh God. Let hope arise in this place, oh God, and wherever these vessels go, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I pray that hope would arise in our families, oh God, that hope would arise, oh God, in our jobs, oh God, that hope would arise in the people that we interact with on the street. would act like there is hope in Jesus Christ, oh God. The way that we talk, oh God. I even pray that the way that we think would change, oh God. When we see situations that discourage us, oh God, I pray that our thoughts would not go into doom, gloom, and despair, oh God. Sometimes our mouths have, have an understanding that we need to keep it tight, but our minds just go wild with despair and hopelessness. But right now, in the name of Jesus, oh God, I pray that we would be convinced, oh God, that we would be, hallelujah, constrained to the hope that we have, constrained to the joy that we through Christ Jesus. Oh God, did you not send your son to give us life and that more abundantly, oh God? We are only beginning to understand what that abundant thing is, oh God. So I pray that even through this service, you would reveal it, reveal your abundance to us, oh God. Reveal the reason why you sent your son, oh God, to live first and then to die and live again for us, oh God. I thank you, oh Jesus. You didn't just send him to die, oh God, but you sent him to live first and to die and to live again. See, the, the live is the emphasis. Jesus lives twice, hallelujah. But only died once, oh God. But sometimes we only focus on the death part, oh God. We only focus on things going down, but not how much is coming up because of your son, Christ Jesus. So I thank you right now, oh God, that even now there are streams in the desert, oh God. There are ways in the wasteland, oh God. We even speak to our own hearts and say, do you not perceive it? Oh God, we are thanking you for the thing that you are doing and the thing that you have done. Oh God, and I pray that this, this service today, oh God, every single piece, every single member, hallelujah, would help us get with the program of Jesus Christ in the earth realm. In the name of Jesus, help us get our hearts in the program, oh God. Help us get our minds in the program, oh God. It's funny, people of the world, they get ready when they're going into a party. They prepare before they go into a party, oh God. But let us prepare in the spirit today, oh God. Let us clothe ourselves in hope, oh God. Let us cling to joy, oh God. Let us believe that we really have the peace that surpasses all understanding today, oh God. I pray that we would prepare for your presence, oh God. If they can prepare, we can prepare much better, oh God. So let us prepare to dwell with you for all eternity in the name of Jesus. Let's prepare for the peace that will come. Let's prepare for joy, oh God. I even thank you that your word says, oh God, that the lion and the lamb will lie down next to each other and the, and the calf and the wolf will chill out, oh God. They will be friends, oh God, because when your son comes, oh God, all that we know, oh God, will be drastically changed. I praise you, God, that the lion in our midst, oh God, the wolf, hallelujah, that seeks to devour, hallelujah, the poor, oh God, all those things will be laid to rest in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I thank you right now that we have a hope and we cling to that hope today. We have something to be joyful about, oh God. Hallelujah. So we praise you and thank you now, even for this service that will align us with your joy. We praise you and we thank you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Joy to the world. Yes. Joy to the world. Joy to the world. Not happiness. I'm glad it's not happiness. Happiness is an emotion that we experience from time to time, but joy is a state of being, right? Paul talks about Philippians and Philippians 4 that I have learned the secret to be content in all things. Right? And so that means that we can be content whether we are happy or we are sad, we can still have joy. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I am joyful for all of you. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> On behalf of our pastors, Dr. Overseer Shannon Mason. Did I say all the I said all the titles, didn't I? Dr. Overseer. Shannon Mason. Yeah. 
Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I just love the love. Don't, don't you love the love? I just love, I love the love. Just love the love. Amen. Just by way of announcements, a few reminders, things that were both announced last week and went out um, over the, during the week. Um, our outreach ministry will be going out today, immediately following service. Amen. Our brother Ray Scott will be leading the charge. So for those of you who have committed to outreach ministry and those some didn't, weren't able to go last time because of other commitments but are able to go this time, know that we are uh, covering you in prayer and, and have great anticipation of what the Lord will do through you as you go out and not only share the gospel and pray with those who are desperately, maybe desperately in need of hope, but also provide some practical, practical evidence of the love of God, providing people, especially our, our members of our communities who are homeless or housing insecure, with practical things that they need. Amen? Amen. And so we're certainly praying for our outreach ministry as they go out today. We're also immediately following service today, doing tree trimming, because it's Christmas time. Uh, so Sister Nakia will be leading us in tree trimming in the fellowship hall immediately following service today. And next Saturday, she's invited us to bring our, she said, faux gifts. That's fancy for some of us. That was fancy. Yeah. So she really needs empty boxes wrapped up in pretty Christmas, in pretty wrapping so that we can put it under the tree and have it kind of set like a, a, a scenery. Uh, so if you did not remember to bring them today, you can bring them Thursday to Bible study or you can bring them out on, or the worship team will be here tomorrow evening for rehearsal. You can bring them tomorrow evening uh, at after 6.30 or you can bring them Thursday after six o'clock or you can bring them next Sunday, next, or ne next Saturday. Yes. Or next Saturday. Next Saturday is our uh, family fellowship. This Saturday, this Saturday coming, is our family Christmas fellowship. So we will be here in our fellowship hall just having a time of one another ring. We're asking everyone to bring a dish that you make well. Yes. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm all about trying new things, but not Saturday. Amen. So a dish that you make. Oh, I feel the spirit of empanadas. I just a wave of glory. Just a wave of empanadio glory just came. Hallelujah. Glory a Dios. Glory a Dios. Um, we'll be here, all our welcome will be here Saturday at 5 p.m. And then Sunday is our children's Christmas program. They will be moving out of the sanctuary in just a little while uh, to continue preparation. But next Sunday, December 17th, we want you all to invite your, invite the children's parents, invite your friends and families, aunties and uncles, to support them as they, they present their Christmas program. And I want to thank the children's ministry that has been working so diligently with them to prepare. Amen. Amen. Uh, last but not least, just to be reminded that we will be on Shabbat from December 15th through January 15th. And during Shabbat, for those of you who are newer to us, um, Shabbat is our time of rest. And the Bible says that God created in six days and on the seventh day he rested. And he, one of the, the Ten Commandments is to, to, to observe times of rest and patterns of Sabbath. And so we, as a congregation, twice a year, uh, take a 30-day period in which we don't have anything other than Sunday service. We don't have any meetings. We don't have any rehearsals. We don't have any prayer line. 
we have Sunday service, and we rest, reflect, and celebrate. So December 15th through January 15th will be our time of Shabbat. There will be no Bible study, there will be no prayer line, there will be no rehearsals, there will be no meetings. Just a time of resting and reflecting. Now, y'all still got to go to work. <laughs> y'all still got to work. And you still got to come to church on Sunday. Amen. So you can't can't tell your boss, well, when my church, we celebrate in Shabbat. Like, when you go on to Shabbat, down the unemployment. But uh, so you still got to go to work. Uh, but the, the extra things, especially for those who serve and are committed in a lot of different places, this is a time of rest from those things. Um, those are all of our announcements. Those are all of our announcements. I want to call for the praise and worship team to come, and I'm going to ask that all that can withstand to receive them as they lead us further into the presence of the living God. Come on and put your hands together as we call
I wonder if anybody in here needs another strategy. If you need another strategy, you've been trying to work with the strategies that you know. You've been doing what seems right according to your natural mind, what seems right according to your training and your experience and what you looked up online and what you looked up in the book and what your friends told you, what your mama and them said, but you're finding it's not working and you need another strategy. been doing what's worked for you before. Lord have mercy Jesus. And you find yourself needing another strategy. I came to announce to you today that as a believer you have the right to disallow sin. Y'all didn't hear me. As a believer you have a right to disallow Satan. As a believer you have a right to disallow. You have the authority isn't that when we talk about the Great Commission, we jump to the go ye therefore, but the therefore is based on the authority that has been granted us in Christ Jesus. Jesus rose from the dead saying, all power, all authority has been granted to me on heaven and earth and based on the authority that I have and I have given unto you, go based on that to do what I've called you to do. So I need y'all to understand that when we say let God arise and enemies be scattered, his enemies be scattered, it is not an invitation to the enemies of God. Pastor Didi said God's enemies are our enemies, and I want to add to that our enemies are also God's enemies. Anything that's the enemy of your peace is the enemy of God. The enemy in your home is the enemy of God. The enemy, come on y'all, the enemy of your flourishing is the enemy of God. And when we say let God arise, it is an invitation to God, but we say his enemies be scattered. We invite God, but we command Satan. Let God arise. And his enemies be scattered. We don't ask Satan if he wants to be scattered. We don't enter into bargains and negotiations and deals with him. Hallelujah. That's what's wrong with some of y'all kids. You negotiate when you should be commanding. We don't bargain with him. We tell him what to do and where to go. We tell him, say you will lose my body in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command you to lose my child in the name of the Lord Jesus. I, I command you 
to loose my family member in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command you to loose my finances in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command you to loose your hold on my marriage in the name of the Lord Jesus. I command you to loose my hold, your hold on my relationship. Say, the Lord God, who whipped you a long time ago, rebukes you now in Jesus' name. I, I need somebody to get that. I, I need somebody that's frustrated because you've been trying to do it in your own strength and with your own strategies to understand that you have been given the authority of the Satan. The Lord rebuke you. Y'all yeah, need to go home and say, walk through your house. Y'all y'all see the movie? See what's the movie? Prayer room. Walk through your house and let Satan know that he has been disallowed from having his way. He has been disallowed from disrupting communication. He has been disallowed from causing misunderstanding and bitterness. He has been disallowed from causing confusion. He has been disallowed from causing depression. He has been disallowed from causing fear. He has been disallowed by from entering his life. He has been disallowed. Say to the Lord God, rebuke you. of God for his people to operate in the authority that he has given us. He delights in that. And what gives us, Minister Lindsay, what gives us the power to do that is not, you know, as my grandma used to say, it's more than just a notion. What gives us the power to do that is the place of our obedience. Oh God. I want to just ignore it. I don't really want to teach, but can I just teach you so? It is your obedience which positions you to demand safety. The Bible says that stubbornness and disobedience are like witchcraft. So that means that when I'm refusing to align with God. I am aligning myself with Satan. Yeah. Now, if I am aligned with him, I can't exercise my authority over him because yeah. I'm aligned with him. That's right. So, that's what the Bible says, right? right. Isn't that what Jesus said? Right. They, 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 they accused him of casting out demons. By Beelzebub, he said, any kingdom divided against itself will not be able to stand. Isn't that what he said? So as long as we are aligned with Satan by way of our disobedience, we have no power. He will wear you out every chance he gets. Please be clear, we all got an area of two or three of disobedience. But what I'm saying is, if you want to cast out Satan in your finances, You got to align with God yeah. in your finances. Yeah. Yeah. And it is your alignment with God that releases the authority to rebuke Satan off of your finances. If you, if you want to cast out Satan in your home, yeah. you got to align with God in your home. And it is your alignment with God in your home that gives you the authority to cast out Satan. Some of us have given up on spiritual warfare because we tried it and we feel like it didn't work. Yeah. It didn't work because you didn't meet the prerequisite. Come on. Amen. I need to say it again. Satan is not impressed that we are passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah. He don't care. He see you more passionate about other things. He, he doesn't care that you command him in an energetic and emphatic way. That has no sway over him. What has sway is when we bring ourselves under the standard of God. Isn't that what the Bible says? When the enemy comes in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against him. You can't win because you ain't got no standard. So if I'm going to get victory in my life, yeah. what is it that I need to do? Because I'm going through the motions. Come on, anybody, I'm going through the motions, but I feel like I'm still losing. I, I, I learned something a while back. We did a, a, a fast against rebellion, and, 
and we fasted for three days. And the enemy came, can I, can I be transparent? He, he, you know, he crept up on me with something he usually get me with. Just me. He crept up on me with something that he usually gets me with. He usually tricks me up with. And because we were in the middle of the fast, I said, boy, bye. You got to be up under something in order to have power to refuse the devil. You remember the brothers that decided that they were going to go and cast out demons, but they had no standard? In the name of that Jesus that Paul has been preaching about. We command you to go. Demon said, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold, hold, hold up, hold up, hold up. Y'all know? Okay, yeah, so we've been in conference. And let, 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 let me understand. You want to cast us out in the name of a Jesus that you don't even have a relationship with? You want to cast me out in the name of a Jesus that you are not aligned to, that you are not submitted to, that you are not walking with, that you are not embedded in and intertwined with? You want to cast, okay, let me, let me tell you how this goes. Paul, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might have been able to get that. Yeah. Jesus, I know. He definitely would have been able to get that. Yeah. But you out here, Nate, yeah. you ain't covered by Jesus. You ain't covered by a standard. You ain't standing on a word. You ain't got the blood covering your sins. You out here in your flesh. You out here in your pride. You out here in your determination not to be like your mama or your determination not to be like your father. You out here you out here being a sister. You out here with your attitude. You out here with your rebellion. They said, I am not obligated to respond to that. I'm trying to help you understand something in here today. That the power of Christ, the same, the Bible says, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives. Somebody say in me, in me, in me, in me, but his spirit is like a flood. You can't turn it off when it's inconvenient for you and then expect to turn it back on and get the same power. I'm talking to somebody. I know I am. 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 It is our connection to God by way of Jesus Christ yeah. that gives us the power over sin. I want to talk about hope today, but I guess I'm not. That gives us the power over Satan. Do you understand? That gives us the power over Satan. That gives us the power over Satan. Let God arise. Come on, y'all come back. You're not supposed to do this. Come back. Because I need you to get it. I need you to get it in your head. I need you to get it in your heart. I need you to get it in your spirit. I need you to understand this so that when you go home, you know what you're working with. I need you to understand this so that when you lay down tonight and the enemy tries to come attack your mind with foolishness, you know what you're working with. I need you to understand this so that when you go to work tomorrow and folks acting reckless, you know what you're working with. I need you to understand this so that when the enemy comes suggesting the things that he has been foolishly, the foolishness that he has been suggesting, you understand this. I need you to understand, hallelujah, that when we sing, let God arise and his enemy be scattered, it's not because it's a cute sounding song. Hallelujah. It's not because of just something that is tickles the emotion of the people. It is because that is how God operates and has commissioned us and given us legitimate authority to bind in his name. Hallelujah. He said, if you bind it, if you disallow it on earth, heaven is going to say, oh yeah, by the way, that's disallowed. And if you allow it on earth, heaven is going to say, oh yeah, by the way, that's allowed. He said, I've given you church. I, I've given you church. I've
and you will succeed. So some of us have been believing in God, but we don't believe in the strategies that we've been given. You don't believe in the strategies that you've been given. So, so you believe God, but you still don't know what to do. You believe God, but you're still confused. You believe God, but you still don't, don't have any direction. But he told them to believe in the Lord your God, and you will be able to stand firm. Believe in his prophets, and you will be able to succeed. Listen to this. After consulting the people, the king appointed singers. Why did she let them sing so much? She won't preach or not. The king appointed singers to walk ahead of the army. Singing to the Lord and praising him for his holy splendor. And this is what they said. Give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Listen, they're walking into a war. The well-trained army is prepared, but the leader says, let the singers go first. And don't send the singers to sing about what the enemy is doing. Don't send the singers to try to frighten or confuse the enemy. Just send the singers to lift up the name of the Lord God. Just send the singers to remind God that we are reminded of who he really is. Just send the singers to give thanks for who is among us. Don't send the singers that will mourn and complain about what's lacking. Send the singers that will recognize that God is in the midst of us and he is mighty in the midst of us and he's been faithful in the midst of us and he's been merciful in the midst of us. So he said, they say, give thanks to the Lord. His faithful love endures forever. Sometimes, many people, I think we're so accustomed to what God does in this place that we miss it. Here it is. At the very moment that they began to sing and give praise to God, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir. The ones who had gathered themselves together, the ones who had been meeting and plotting and planning and scheming to destroy Israel and Judah. God, at the moment that they began to sing, the Lord caused the armies of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir to start fighting among themselves. Lord have mercy. You know what that means? It means that their praise became what destroyed the destroyer. The armies of Moab and Ammon turned against their allies from Mount Seir and they killed every one of them. And after they destroyed the army of Seir, they began attacking each other. Judah has not even gotten to the battlefield yet. All they're doing is singing praise. They haven't even had to pick up their sword yet. All they're doing is singing praise. They haven't even had to shed any blood yet. All they're doing is singing praise. And the Bible says this. It says that when the army of Judah arrived at the lookout point in the, in the wilderness, when they finally got to the scene where the battle was supposed to go down, when they finally got to the place that the enemy had set up for their destruction, because they had led with praise. Yeah. Come on. I guess somebody say lead with praise. Lead with praise. Lead with praise. Lead with praise. Because they had led with praise. By the time they got to the place where they needed to fight, they found that the enemies had already been destroyed. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. Because they led with praise. All they saw in the place of what was trying to them, where dead bodies lying on the ground as far as the eye can see. The Bible says not a single one of the enemy had escaped because they led with praise. They led with thanksgiving. They led. That's why, that's why we focus not, we focus on the word, we focus on fellowship, but we focus on worship. Because worship is what God often uses 
to go ahead of us, Lord have mercy, and disrupt the plans and the intentions of the adversary. King Jehoshaphat and his men. Now, since the enemies have been destroyed by each other, Lord have mercy. They came to the battle. They came to the to the to the battleground to fight. But because they led with praise, now all they have to do is collect plunder. They came to fight for their lives. But God got in the midst of their praise and fought for them. So now they're just stepping over dead bodies, picking up stuff. Oh, I'll take that. Oh, well, we'll take, I'll take that peace. I'll, I'll take that joy. I'll, I'll take that hope. I'll take that provision. I'll, I'll take that promise. I'll, I'll take that expectation. I'm supposed to be struggling today. Hallelujah. So let me slide this in. <laughs> David says in Psalm 43, 5, why are thou cast down on my soul? Why are you disquieted within me? Hope that way, God. He is having an internal debate. about whether he has reason not to hope anymore. Anybody else under the name that Lord have mercy? He's trying to figure out whether or not hope will help him in this circumstance. And in his internal dialogue, he says to himself, self, You are going to hope in God. Yeah. Self, I know you've been spending a lot of time thinking that all of your best days are behind you. Self, I know a lot of people that you thought were for you have turned out to be just the opposite. Self, I know you're wondering why it's taking God so long to answer. Self, I, 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 I I know you're wondering why you're having to deal with all of this given that you've been so faithful. So I, I know you're wondering whether any hope can be found in this place. But in his internal dialogue, he says to himself, why am I so depressed? Why am I in such despair? Why are my thoughts so dark? Why have I given up hope? Why are you cast down? Why are you so disquieted, so interrupted, so discombobulated, so irritated, so agitated, so annoyed, so on edge? Why? So why are you acting like that? Hope in God. Why? I love this. He says, I'll yet praise him for the help of his countenance. What does that mean? That's from King James Version, version-ish. The help of his countenance. It means I didn't think this would take this long. I don't understand how we got here. I don't know how much longer I can tolerate his pain, this pain. I don't know what I've done to deserve this kind of betrayal. But despite all that, my hope is in the fact that God's face is towards me. Lord have mercy, Jesus. Hope is the very sense that change is possible. Hope is the very feeling that the trajectory that I have been on is not one that I have to stay on forever. It is the idea that God has not run out of ideas. I have run, may have run out of ideas, yeah. but hope for the believer is the idea that even if I have run out of ideas, God has not run out of ideas. Years 
ago, I heard an epidemiologist by the name of Ray Lori talk about the trajectory of certain mental illnesses and certain diseases, and he was studying uh, 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 antisocial behaviors, and I was sitting in that class, and he was giving a wonderful lecture and illustrating wonderfully, and he was saying that if these things happen, and these things happen, and these things happen by age five, and these things happen by age 10, and these things happen by age 16, then the likelihood is that the person would end up in jail, or the person would end up with this mental illness, or the person would end up, and I sat there, and and I promise you, I felt the Holy Ghost right in my seat because as I was looking at his trajectory, I was checking off the things that I know. Yeah. Lord, Lord, have mercy. I'm going to what that was me. And that was. And, and I was sitting there and I was looking at this diagram and, and I began to see in my mind a place right in the middle and there was a great big but God. But God. Do you understand that the but God is what changes the entire trajectory of your life? It is the but God that kept you from losing your mind. It is the but God that kept you from your car from going off the road. It's the but God that kept you from being addicted to crack. It's the but God that kept you from taking your life. It's the but God that kept your family together. It's the but God. Hope is the idea that he can but God me at any moment. And I learned this, that not only can he do it, but if you read the Bible, and check the history of his dealings with his people. He most often uses the but God to demonstrate that he's in the midst of them. Yes. Yes. So it means, Brother Edwin, that it's not just something that he can do if he wants to. That would be good if he could do it if he wanted to. That would give me, that would, that would be a little encouraging if God, if I just knew that God could change the trajectory of my life if he wanted to. If I just knew God could change the tra trajectory of my finances if he wanted to. That would be nice. Right. But what gives the believer hope? Because yeah. our hope is not like everybody else's hope. What gives the believer hope is that we understand that not only can he change the trajectory of our lives, but he will change the trajectory of our lives. That God said, let me come over here and switch this up for you right quick. Then you will know that I am God. Let me, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me come and heal your mind right quick. Then you will know that I am God. Let, 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 let me come in and, and, and heal this relationship right quick. Then you will know that I am God. Let me come and take the taste for those cigarettes out your mouth right quick. Then you will know that I am God. Let, let, let me come and, and deliver you from that road rage right quick. Then you will know that I am God. Let me come and open the door that you've been knocking on but refuse to open real quick. Then you will know that I am God. Let me come and change the way you think about yourself, even though you've been thinking wrong about yourself for 35, 45, 55 years. Then you will know that I am God. Let me come and shut the mouths that have been talking against you, that have been trying to destroy you, that have been plotting against you. Then you will know that I am God. Hope for the believer. Is the idea that at any moment he will but God me. Yes. <laughs> Lord Jesus, at any moment he will but God me. I, at any moment, I, I don't know if it's this moment or, or the next moment, but you will but God me. Then I found this out that David wrote in Psalm 43. Why have I cast out all my soul and why have I disquieted within me? Hope that with God, for I will get praise him for the hope, the help of his countenance. But then, a little bit later on, he wrote something that let me know that through his experience, David had become an epidemiologist as well. David said, if it had not been 
for the Lord who is on our side. When men rose up against us, they would have swallowed us up alive. David said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, the waters would have overwhelmed us. The streams would have gone over our soul. But blessed be the name of the Lord who has not given us as a prey to our enemies. Our souls have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fowler. The trap is broken and we are escaped. In other words, he said I was on my way to being consumed. I was on my way to being overtaken. I was on my way to being drowned in my sorrow. But God, but God in me. But that's why I love church, because when I come to church, I'm surrounded by people, even if I feel like I'm still in the same spot. And, and God is not hearing me, and he's not answering me, and he hasn't done anything for me. I can look around and see people for whom God changed the whole trajectory of their situation, who in one moment were in despair, but in another moment, God turned their weeping into rejoicing, who in one moment could barely walk in the door and in another moment came skipping in because God healed their bodies, who in one moment their heads were hung down because they were so cast down in their souls, and the next moment they were bringing joy to others who in one moment had no hope for life, but in the next moment they were encouraging others to keep going on in the name of the Lord. I love the house of God because it reminds But God in you. And he but God in you. And he but God in you. And he but God in you. I was talking to somebody the other day. And when I first met them, two members of their family wouldn't even speak to each other. And now the two members of their family are closer than anybody else in the family. Come on, somebody. If he but God in that family situation, if he but God in your financial situation, if he but God in, come on, when well, you didn't know how you were going back to school, but he but God in you, if he but God in your schedule so that you could be in the house of God where you wanted to be, if he but God in you when you should have been turned over on the side of the road because you fell asleep behind the wheel, come on, if he but God in you, and he got another but God left for me. Hope. Thank y'all, media. They had the slides prepared. Sorry. Hope thou in God. Yeah. I'm done. Hope thou in God. It is not something that David said to somebody else. Yeah. I imagine him yeah. looking yeah. in the mirror. Which was probably something that was sterling silver shined up real good. I don't know that they have married. <laughs> and saying, Hope thou in God. You, you know what we've been through with God. Yeah, Hope thou yeah. in God. You, yeah. you know He brought us from being shepherds, right? Hope thou in God. In God. You know, He remembered us when everybody else forgot us, right? Uh -huh. Hope thou in God. You know, He preserved us when Saul tried to kill us, right? Hope thou in God. You know, He fed us when we were in the wilderness without a God to our name, right? Hope thou in God. And keep praising Him. Keep praising Him. Because His face is towards you. And so, Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus. I thank you today. Thank you, Lord. For what you have done by way of your power. Thank you, God. Ah, yeah, not so. What you have done by way of your presence. And what you have done by way of your purposes, Lord God. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. 
that you have indeed risen and caused your enemies to be scattered. Thank you, Lord God, that you have indeed changed the trajectory of our lives. God, you have stepped in when we were on our way to hell. When we were on our way to despair, when we were on our way to destruction, you but God in us. And I pray for everyone that is under the sound of my voice, I speak to their hope and command that even their low hope that may seem to be all the way on low with almost nothing left in reserve, Lord God. I declare that because they have been in your presence today, their hope is being revived, oh God. Because they are set under your word today, their hope is being revived, Lord. Because they have felt the touch of your hand today, their hope is being revived. God, your word declares that there is hope for a tree even if it's been cut down to the stump because it will begin to sprout again at the scent of water, God. Thank you for allowing us to smell water in this house today, oh God, that we will begin to spring forth again, oh God, in the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I declare, oh God, that we will not quit. We will not give up. We will not even go back. I come against regress, regressing in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, I declare that despair will not take authority over us. That the spirit of heaviness will not have the final say, Lord God. But we will hope in you. Hallelujah. 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 We will hope in you and praise you for the help of your countenance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Somebody take out your phone real quick. Everybody's phone is already right out. Hallelujah. Just take a selfie of yourself. Just take, take a selfie of yourself. I'm taking a selfie. I'm sweating and freezing and all that. Just, just take a selfie. Take, take your selfie. I know everybody from the You can take it at your angle if you want, you know. Take a selfie. Sweaty selfie. Take a selfie. Now I want you to sing your selfie to yourself. I see y'all working on your angle too.
hope. Now you need to get in your car and look at your car if you're in the to get on the bus, get on the bus. They got a date, you bear with me. <laughs> oh yeah, praise God. Amen. For the help of his counselors. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on and put your hands together and give God.
slide room with that provision. Amen. So I want to pray for what you need. In the faith that I have, that my name is a different God. So I want you to put it on there with you, like for real. Like, don't, don't, don't be concerned about looking. I don't want to see. Just put it on there with you. Need. So just put it on there with you. Need. You can put it in the offering basket. Amen. I'll receive the envelopes and I'll receive the prayer requests. If you're giving online, you can also submit a prayer request at pray for me at pray the number four me at nlwm.net. You can do that. I believe there's also notes. Can we put notes when we give online? about 
being neighborly blah, 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 today. But I praise God for the word of God and for all that God has done in this place because even the corny reminder has become new to me throughout the service. Overseer, we, we had a time of, of, of worship and praise and warfare, and I, I, I believe that, at least for me, things that I thought that God wouldn't, I was reminded that he will today. And with that hope, Overseer said that we have that hope. So she, she said that he'll but got us. He will, like we have a guarantee. So my, in my head I thought to myself, then all of us are either on the before side or on the after side of a but God. Yeah. And sometimes we're between but gods, amen? Yeah, 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 yeah. So in comes my neighbor comment. But before that, I wanna read this poem, it's tiny. It reads, the presence of Jesus always kindles joy even when it is hidden and is with hidden things. Jesus hidden in his mother's womb gladdens John, who is likewise lying beneath his mother's heart. This shows that no darkness or seclusion, no invisibility or concealment, neither flesh nor blood, nor corporeal or natural thing, nothing can impede joy in Jesus. And so this picture of joy going everywhere and us being sandwiched between but gods leads me to question, who sees you in your but God sandwich? Because if you just had a but God, that means you're filled with that kind of joy that was able to animate John, even though he was inside of his mother. It was inside of Mary, but Elizabeth and John caught it too. So if you have that same but God joy inside of you, who sees you on the both sides of your but God? So I pray in the name of Jesus that this week, last week we thought, we thought about, wow, Jesus came and he is coming for me. But this week, we have the hope of a but God kind of God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So who are you going to share that hope with? And sometimes sharing that hope is just standing next to them so they can feel the jump. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Amen? So I encourage you to get next to somebody. I was in my house just reveling in, wow, that's awesome that we have this joy inside of us. But I realized I need to position my life in ways that allow me to rub up against people yeah, yeah, yeah. who feel that joy in that book too, yeah, yeah. Who, who need to feel that oh, there is a God and he loves me, he's coming for me, and he, I'm just on my before side of my but God moment, amen? amen? So I just pray that this week, as we like the one and the two again, yeah. we would be reminded that not only does God do it for us, but he wants us to be that animating um, vehicle of hope for somebody else. Amen. Yeah. share a quick uh, practical testimony this week. Uh, Minister Lindsay just talked about being a vehicle of hope for someone else, right? So um, earlier this week, um, we shared it, came into some, we realized we're going to need some finances, right? Um, so I was one of the folks that raised my hand. And some, some pretty good finances pretty quick. And as I sat there figuring out like, how are we going to do this, how are we going to do this, I really if I could be transparent and honest, I felt very inadequate and, 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 and kind of helpless as, as a husband, as a father. I felt like, you know, I'm not covering my responsibility. And earlier this week, I'm at work. In the midst of this, right, the same day that, that we got this information, and I'm outside, and there's this man across, I work at a school, at a high school, so um, just about to go on break, there's this man across the street it was cold this week. Man across the street that was gathering like iron or whatever. And he comes over to me and asks me to use my phone. And I was like, okay, that's fine. Uh, I let him use my phone and he was trying to get a ride uh, from a person to take him over to the metal uh, yard so that he could exchange his iron for money. And he couldn't get him on the phone. And he's like, I'm sorry to bother you, but thank you for letting me use your phone. I'm saying, I'm sorry, you know, and I try to walk away. He walks across the street. But the Holy Spirit kept on saying, no, go back. And so I got in my car. <laughs> and I tried to drive by. I'm like, I'm going to see how much stuff he got. 
And I'm like, nah, I'm like, all right, you know, I got, I got, I'm in the middle of the day, you know. And the Holy Spirit's like, no, turn around. And so I turn back around, right? And and I and I park and I ask him like, would you like a ride? He's like, man, yeah, I appreciate it, I appreciate it. And he gets in the car, we get the stuff in the car, we get to talking. And he he believes in Jesus. He's so happy, and he's so joyous. But one of the things he told me, he said, I'm collecting this because I usually do landscape. But the season is over. And he said, I'm 43 years old. He said, I have a newborn that's six months old. Wow. And so I do this because until my appointment kicks in, we don't really have much. And I'm just trying to get some formula and some diapers. Now, keep in mind, this is the thing. Me and Shannon just have a baby, right? The, the boy is grown because he's feeding all the time. And so he actually grew out of his newborn diapers and his size one diapers. And so I had about two, three boxes of diapers in my trunk. Wow. Also, when we went to get his shots, the doctor gave us six months of formula. And so I had a surplus of all of these things while I'm riding around thinking I'm inadequate. God is using me as a tool to bless someone else. Right? So regardless of what we think we don't have, God can still use us in ways we never imagined. Right? I never knew this man from a can of paint, but from a conversation on the street, he was I was able to be a vehicle of blessing for him and his family. Amen. I just want to share. celebrated their 11th wedding anniversary. Management. <laughs> so management. 
management, uh, they have a sign up list for the Christmas Koinonia Fellowship. So please see them immediately following service. And again, be reminded that the Koinonia Fellowship is this coming Saturday, 5 o'clock, right here. We just want to be together, celebrate Jesus, and eat some good food. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 Enjoy one another. And so we invite you all to come out and to see others. Oh, Little wave your hands. Sister Shaniqua, wave your hands. Uh, if you want to sign up for to bring something for the Quinity of Fellowship. Amen? Amen. Amen. If you would all please stand up. Oh, there's something from the children's ministry. <laughs> Amen. I just want to first congratulate the kids. They're working hard. Um, secondly, I want to remind them and the adults that have them, we made uh, little invitations for them to give to a family member, so they need to sign their name on the inside and then give it to someone to invite to come and see them minister next week. So please don't let them lose it, don't let them throw it away or anything like that, but sign their name and give it to somebody to invite to come and see them minister. Amen. Aww, children. Amen. They're so cute. I feel like they multiply weekly. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. We're so thankful. I'm so thankful to God for them. So please, again, uh, those those parents and other family members that bring children, remember to have them give those invitations to someone. Amen? Amen. Amen. If we could all stand. Amen. Amen. Come on, children. to dismiss. I pray the blessing of the Lord be upon you. And I pray for peace during this Christmas season. For peace. That you won't be overwhelmed and stressed out and trying to do the most. Amen. 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 But that you will have peace. So Father, we thank you for our gathering together in this place today. We thank you for the move of your spirit, for your presence here with us. Thank you, God, that you still break every chain. Hallelujah. Oh, God, you are still, Lord, uh, removing burdens and destroying yokes, God. You are still regulating minds, healing hearts and bodies, restoring relationships, setting that which is broken correct, Lord God, and, and binding up the broken heart. And we thank you, Lord God, that you are still loosing the bands of wickedness, Lord. You are still interrupting trajectories and still but God in people. Oh, God, you're, you're still rerouting lives. Lord God, and showing us that all things are possible if we would only believe. We thank you, Lord God, for the hope, not only of this season, God, the world tries to get in on it this season and call it Christmas magic, oh God, but thank you that we live in hope, Lord God. God, we have hope in July, Lord God, and hope in September, Lord God. We, we have hope, Lord God, in November and hope in February, oh God, because we are a people who have been called to a life of hope, and you delight, God, and changing the trajectory of our lives. So God, we ask that you would show yourself mighty and show yourself strong, even as we remind ourselves this week to hope thou in God, that we will yet praise you for the help of your countenance. Be glorified, we pray. We thank you now as we ask these things, counting them done according to our faith. May the Lord bless you and keep you cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord God lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. I speak peace. I speak peace. I speak peace. I speak peace in your mind and your body. I speak peace in somebody's digestive system. I speak peace in your sleep. Peace in your dreams. I speak peace in your home. I speak peace in your job. And peace, the peace that comes from keeping your mind fixed on all that he is despite of where you find yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.